Hey comic book lovers and fans of all things Star Wars, today we're going to be taking a look at Star Wars The High Republic issue number one from Marvel Comics. This is the first of six issues according to Comixology and also the first comic book series in the new era of Star Wars which is called The High Republic. So I'll be doing a review of the this first issue and then looking at a few things that I thought were particularly interesting from a Christian worldview perspective. So let's go. The galaxy is at peace, ruled by the glorious Republic and protected by the noble and wise Jedi Knights. As a symbol of all that is good, the Republic is about to launch Starlight Beacon into the far reaches of the Outer Rim. This new space station will serve as a ray of hope for all to see, but just as a magnificent renaissance spreads throughout the Republic, so does a frightening new adversary. Now the guardians of peace and justice must face a threat to themselves, the galaxy, and the Force itself. Hello and welcome to Pages of Light, where we analyze literature from a Christian worldview. If that sounds like something that you're into, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss any new content. So Star Wars The High Republic is my first foray into this new era of Star Wars. Uh, I also picked up the novel Light of the Jedi, written by Charles Soule, because uh, I'm interested to see how this new era of Star Wars will be, if it's going to be similar to the sequel trilogy, which I wasn't a huge fan of, or if it's going to be um, something different and interesting that I will enjoy. All right, so that's enough preamble. Let's jump into the comic. First, we'll talk about some of the characters in the comic book. So Keeve Trannis is the main character who is a Padawan in training to become a Jedi Knight and she is preparing for her trials. And she's a bit self-conscious about whether or not she's ready to take the trials, um, but she is quick on her feet. She's a woman of action and we get to see that throughout the comic as she has to save those around her and herself. Um, something else unique about Keeve is that she has a double bladed lightsaber uh, similar to Darth Maul but it's green and it looks as if it can detach and also become two lightsabers because she has two different pieces on her kind of sash there that hold the lightsabers there. Next we have Skier, who is a Jedi Master and is the one who is training Keeve. He is of a reptilian race called the Trandoshan, and recently he lost his arm in a conflict with the Nile, who I think are the big bad enemies uh, of this era of Star Wars and the High Republic. Um, and he's not really the same after this battle, but the others can't figure out why. And then we have Canary, who is a fly-like creature who kind of follows Keeve around. He's very small. He almost reminds me of what a Spren kind of would be, if you're familiar with the Stormlight Archive books by Brandon Sanderson. These little creatures that follow around uh, their masters. Um, so he follows around Keeve throughout her Jedi trials, and he's kind of a comic relief character. Um, but I found him a bit more annoying than funny throughout the story. And then finally, we have a few other side characters. We have Avar Chris, who is a Jedi Master at Starlight Beacon. And then she also later becomes the Marshal of the whole station. And then we have Maru, who seems to be like an operations and communications specialist at, the, at Starlight Beacon as well. So overall, I didn't think the characters were particularly interesting for this first issue, but it is a bit hard to do a lot of character development uh, within just one issue, 24 pages or so. Um, I probably would have liked to have seen a little bit more backstory on Keeve, especially since she's the main character, maybe about what planet she's from, you know, some of her childhood stuff, um, just to kind of get me more invested in who she is and why we should care about her and her, um, her future in this comic. So the story for this first issue basically follows Keeve as she completes her Jedi trials. Her master, Skier, takes her to this planet of Shuriden, which is close to uh, the space station of Starlight Beacon. And they're training, and she asks them why they're here. We should be preparing for the trials. And he says, well, that's why we're here. We're going to do your trials, which is a big surprise to her because she was not ready uh, to take her trials. But Skier knew that she was not going to be ready, so I think it was a good decision on his part to just kind of throw her into the fire as it were because he knew that she was ready even though she didn't think that she was ready. Keeve's task for her trials is to retrieve this pendant at the top of these spiky structures known as the needles. They're like rocks almost but they're super crumbly. They're about 10 to 15 stories high it looks like um, and she's impressed that Skier was able to get up there to put the pendant there because he only has one arm. 
So she's up there climbing and Canary is there talking to her and bothering her. And then one of Canary's friends comes over and Kiva's really annoyed that now there's two people here bothering her as she's trying to complete her trials. Um, but this trial is cut short seemingly by this swarm of creatures called Radati. They're like locusts who are just tearing through this area and they're crushing all of the needles. And so Keith has to like jump off and so she can save herself. Um, and she realizes they're going straight for Canary's town and they're going to destroy it. So if she jumps in her ship called, which is a vector and she begins to follow this swarm of locusts. So she's able to catch up with them in her ship and she jumps out and uses the force to kind of sense what their mission is and their purpose. And she figures out that they're just trying to get to their home world because uh, their species migrates every generation or so. Uh, but the problem is that Starlight Beacon is emitting a frequency that is interrupting with the frequency that they would normally follow, which means that they're going to Starlight Beacon instead of their normal home world. So this is a problem, obviously, because they don't want the these locusts, the Radati, to destroy this, the uh, station. So she jumps into action. She gets in her vector and reprograms her ship to broadcast the same frequency so that the Radati are now following her ship. She puts it on autopilot, ejects, and now the Radati are following this ship out into space, which is nowhere near uh, Starlight Beacon. So she has saved the day. Skier seems to be mad about this whole situation because they lost a vector ship and they now they need transportation and she also abandoned her Jedi trials. But it was all kind of a ruse because Skier had originally kind of orchestrated all of these events through the Force. I'm not sure how he did that, um, but the actual trial was how she would handle the situation with the Radati. So they go back to Starlight Beacon. They meet with Avar Chris, the marshal of the station now and she is given her knighthood status as a Jedi. I think the story for this first issue did an okay job of setting up the characters, but not really the main storyline, and this felt more like a prologue designed to move Keeve from Padawan status to knight status. Um, we didn't really get a, any villains set up for this, so I'm looking forward to seeing how they're introduced in the coming issues, and I also wish that there was a little bit more backstory with the characters, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, just so I could have more investment in, you know, why I should care about what they're doing and what they're trying to accomplish. All right, so now let's take a look at a few things that I thought were particularly interesting from a Christian worldview perspective and something that we can think about and take away as Christians. Um, so in the beginning of the story, we have Keeve talking about what the Force means to her. And I'll just read what she says. She says, All is calm. All is well. The Force is with me. It surrounds me. It brings me peace. It stops me from screaming at the top of my lungs. So in this Star Wars comic and also the Star Wars universe as a whole, there's the idea that the force is kind of in everything and the force is all around us and it moves through us and all of these these different things and it's almost like a replacement for god and it kind of mirrors the idea of pantheism which states that god is in everything and so people in the star wars universe are putting their trust in the force and this also kind of brings up the idea of like listening to your inner voice uh, because you know in a new hope Obi-Wan Kenobi tells Luke to just use the force and trust the force. He doesn't need to use the little uh, computer generated monitor. He can just trust the force to make the, the correct shot in that movie. Um, and that kind of makes me think about people today who say that you should just kind of trust your own inner voice and trust your heart. And that will lead you down the, uh, the most successful path or the path that will lead, have you um, give you the most happiness. Um, but that's so often not the case. We see that, you know, a lot of times when we follow our heart, we're just really doing it for our own selfish reasons. We're doing it for instant gratification and not really doing it for um, the long-term well-being of, uh, of our life. And it's important to remember that our nature is a sinful one, which means that we'll tend to make decisions that are not pleasing to God and not part of the will of God in our life. But this is not to say that non-Christians can't make good decisions or moral decisions even. It just means that they won't have a necessarily a check on their own desires and they won't try to filter it through a biblical worldview. So this can just be a reminder for us as Christians to not always just kind of 
go with the flow or go with go with our gut, go with whatever we think uh, is the right answer, but to really try to filter all of our decisions and our thoughts through a biblical lens instead of just, you know, what the world tells us is the correct way of doing things. Another idea that this comic brings up, and it's something that Christians can ponder, is uh, the topic of rhetoric versus action. So Skier is talking to Keeve uh, during her trials, and he says, There is also such a thing as rhetoric. A Jedi does more than simply parrot ancient lore. A Jedi acts. So it's one thing for us as Christians to just talk the talk and instead of walking the walk and actually trying to live out the Christian life. And this is something that we should constantly be evaluating ourselves on as Christians throughout our life. So some questions we should be asking ourselves is, am I living the life that Jesus would want me to live? Am I living in accordance with what the Bible teaches? Am I loving my neighbor like Jesus has loved me? Of course, these are things we will never be able to fully live up to, but that's why we need to constantly be in prayer and reading the Bible daily to help us live out the life that Jesus would have us live. In Romans 12 verses 1 through 3, we have Paul who tells us, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is, God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. So in conclusion, I think this first issue was okay. I, I'm looking forward to what they're going to be doing with it, but I wish this first issue had a little bit more in terms of character development and setting up some of the main story elements. Um, but yeah, I'm still looking forward to what they're going to be doing in this new High Republic era, and I'll be reading the other comics that come out, and I'll be reading that other book that I mentioned, Light of the Jedi by Charles Soule. So hopefully it'll be a, a good era and a new time of Star Wars fun. All right, that's going to do it for this video. Um, what did you think about Star Wars The High Republic? If you have read the comic, if you've read any of the other um, new Star Wars stuff, let, also let me know what you think down in the comments. Um, if you like this video, please hit that button and also subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss any new videos when I upload them. Thanks for watching and remember to keep reading and share the gospel with someone. I'm interested to see what it's going to happen in the future. Um, that's terrible. That's just too, too many ums. <laughs>